Um, so radium-223 is administered in peripheral IV, 45 to 60 seconds, and uh, it's given once every four weeks, a total of six infusions, six cycles, so that's a course of therapy. So in order to get in the six treatments, you need six months. So when we first started using it, most of my patients, if not all, were all post-chemotherapy patients. And in the course of the last, you know, uh, 18 months, I've really moved to the majority of my patients now, the overwhelming majority, are before chemotherapy because the, the, the therapy takes, it's a six-month course, there's no pre-medication to take, there's no steroid requirement. Uh, the only thing I have my patients do is just stay hydrated um, before and after. The medication needs to be administered by someone with what's known as a Nuclear Regulatory Commission licensure. So it invariably would be either a radiation oncologist or a nuclear medicine radiologist. Now it could be a medical oncologist or urologist as long as you have that training to handle an isotope. Uh, what I really like about it, as, and for someone who's really spent my career now in, in treating patients with advanced prostate cancer, is its tolerability. Um, they drive in to, to get it at our uh, at, at radiation oncologist or the nuke med radiologist, they drive themselves home. It's, they're literally in and out in, in a few minutes. There's no monitoring that has to be done on site. Um, other than some very low-grade um, diarrhea, uh, the patients tolerate this remarkably well. We do check a CBC because there's about a very single-digit incidence that you can get some myelosuppressive effects, but it's in the single digits. So we check a CBC looking at hemoglobin and platelets. It's nothing like was seen in earlier generation radiopharmaceuticals. So this is really a sea change in our armamentarium of the CRPC um, space. Um, you know, it, it, it's really been beneficial for patients, and it, it, it gives us more things to consider in addition to the oral novel hormonal therapies that we have, the chemotherapies that we have uh, as well. For my patients who I place on radium-223, um, uh, once they finish, at some point in time, they will progress, as will all patients on virtually every uh, 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 approved therapeutic CRPC agent that we have. And uh, absolutely, I expect at some point that my patients will uh, progress and I will offer them a chemotherapy. We've been infusing chemotherapy in, in, uh, in my clinic since 2006. We're very comfortable with administering both docetaxel and cabazitaxel. Um, so absolutely, and I discuss that with my patients early on. In fact, usually about the time that the patient first becomes asymptomatic M1 CRPC, I discuss with them all of the approved agents that are available for patients at that time, which now include an immunotherapeutic in the form of Cipula cell T, two oral hormonal agents, uh, abiraterone acetate and zalutamide, once they develop any sort of bone-related symptomatology, radium-223, and that can include requirement as, uh, for a Tylenol, acetaminophen, aspirin, uh, a, a non-steroidal inflammatory to a narcotic. Uh, and then I also discuss with them the possibility that even they could receive docetaxel, uh, a, a chemotherapeutic agent. Um, really, the only agent that's not at this current time approved for them would be cabazitaxel which is now uh, on its labeled indication is second line uh, chemotherapy. So I think it's very important to get this conversation out there early to let the patient know and the family that none of these therapeutics are curative. They're, they, they're delaying progression of the disease and we don't always know the best sequence. We don't have all the information we want yet on combination therapies. We may talk about that later today. But I think having a frank discussion about why these therapies were approved, how they were approved, uh, how they're administered, the associated tolerability, and monitoring is very important.